Hello. This is day three of our um, Marathon Live series uh, where we are painting a landscape of Crummet Water in the Lake District in England. Uh, I've done two days so far uh, and I must admit yesterday I didn't, well either day really, I haven't done a whole lot of painting. Today's different, today's going to be a different day and we are going to crack on. So if you've joined already, hello. If you haven't joined, you're going to miss some stuff because I'm really going to have to paint today to get some some stuff done. So out on the palette so far, I've got black, I've got dioxazine purple and I've got neutral grey. And uh, you may recall yesterday, I, was, I couldn't find where I was in the, in the picture. And that's because I must have knocked this bit off with the sky. So I'll, I'll put that in now and it's a dark moody looking purple. So I'll get some of this purple, some of the diox, some of the grey, a little bit of the black, mix through it. I think that's fine. And I'm just going to put the the peak of this, um, this peak, <laughs> the peak of the peak I'm going to put in. Hello Sharon, thank you so much for joining. I know it's really quite early for you. Um, so my recommendations would be grab a cup of coffee, kick back before you start your day and spend some time here with us. You're very welcome. So this goes down a little way down here um, and then we have some light colour that comes up, across, strikes up across the top of this ridge down here which I started to put in yesterday here but I didn't actually go far enough with it and there's also some purple some darker purple that comes let me just have a look at my proper picture on my MacBook um, it comes down here so where I thought it was trees it is always worth trying to get the best image that you that you can and very often that's from the original you know, up on your, your MacBook, your laptop, whatever, um, it's much clearer. Sure, it's it was 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Mid-morning break. Yeah. Nearly time for 11sies. So this comes down like that. This green comes up and there's just a sort of... I'm just going to put that in like that because there are actually some boulders in that section. There. And here we've got a bit of greenery, actually going on. Let's have a paint the purple in and leave the green that we've got in and see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that's acceptable. We've really got to crack on people because I've just been messing around. Been doing too much talking and nothing like enough painting. Nothing. So I've got trees coming in round here which is what we've got this does go off down here this sort of ridge um, but there is a bit of bright a little bit of bright green right on that and then we've got a bit more of this here probably going to have to come back and put some details in here we can't just leave them as blocks of colour um, just don't look right like that. I'm literally just pouncing my brush up and down at this stage just to get some build as an idea of where we need to be, what needs to be going on. I don't like that line up there, so I'll just paint it out. That's a good thing about things that you don't like with acrylic paint, you just paint them out. So I need a more grey, um, a more grey version of that, similar but more grey I think. So let's just add a bit more grey into there. So we've still got a purple hue definitely, um, but it's, so here's the top of here and it has got some some sort of rocks in the top there. It's a kind of rocky 
And then there's a bit of greenery here, which we have addressed. And there's some. And here. Of green, yeah, so there's rocks in here too. I'll come back in and with with a darker colour and give those a bit of a bit of light and dark in their life. Just going to use my little round brush um, for putting in some details. So this one bit of detail on these here just to make them stand out as rocks and then as we come down same thing it's not difficult this you just just really drawing um, lines like the bottom two sides of a box pretty much is all it is just not regular don't do them too regularly or they start to look not uh, not very good. So I'll put some white out and we'll mix some white through that to give us some highlights on that. We'll mix that through. So it's the same colour with just a bit of titanium white added to it really. Well that is what it is. Not even really. So I hope you all had a very pleasant Sunday evening. We've been watches, watching the Ashes Cricket. Uh, and I'm sorry if anybody's about to watch it, but England lost. No huge surprise there. So, OK, we've got this sort of rocky terrain there, which is nice. And up above that is um, greenery. So I'm just going to put some of this green out, which we know is quite transparent from yesterday and the day before. So I'm going to mix a little bit of the olive green, I nearly said olive oil there, a bit of olive green through it and a bit of that titanium white just to give it um, enough body, hopefully, to uh, to make it a bit more opaque so we don't have to put layer upon layer upon layer on. Got a lot of paint on my brush there. So where am I aiming for? So this is this bit that comes down here. There's some... Yeah, I, I think we're not too far out with what we did yesterday, actually. So let's just put some foliage on here. This is quite light. It's quite a light green. I don't want it that light. In fact, I'm going to do something radical and add a touch of black to it, which will really dull it down. That's nice, giving us a browny greeny colour. So we're not by any stretch of the imagination here, you know, putting things in that are exactly the same as the picture. We're getting the flavour of what we've got. Now there's not much difference between the background colour of this and these that we're putting on. So um, they're there, you can just see that they're there. So I'm just going to pick up some of that sap green and see if I can highlight them at all. Not with that, I can't. I think I'm going to have to use the thalo green. I've been trying to... this, you've got the canvas prepped and reference picture tapes down. Oh, well done, Sharon. You are so good. So good. Teacher's pet. Teacher's, absolute teacher's pet. Um, right, so yeah, this foliage. So it does actually come in drifts, sort of along. So let's... They're, they're broken up. It drifts at sort of intervals, really. And as we get nearer to here, it actually gets lighter. 
but we know if we just add white to thalo green we get peppermint colour. So I've just added a bit of the sap green into the white and into the thalo green to give us a slightly lighter colour because it does get lighter down here as it comes down here. As it gets nearer to the um, water. And there are bits of highlights up here as well. Try not to get too caught up in this. It's on the other side of the water. You can't really see it anyway. Um, so, yeah, I like that. We've got some vegetation. We've got some rocks above it. We've got this little bit here, which could do with a little bit more green in it. Says, Hi, sorry, late again. <laughs> Hi, Karen. I'm determined today to not get sidetracked. I'm on it. I've got to be on it. Otherwise, we're literally going to be on this till Christmas. So um, I'm really, try really trying hard to um, to get cracking. So this has got this green green bit up here um, and the sides of it come down into that green bit. It's more like a sort of basin. A little bit on the uh, on the side of the fell. Um, Karen, this is a mixture of sap green, olive green, titanium white, and black uh, to try and get us somewhere near to the colour we're after. Karen says, "Okay, I'm listening and watching." <laughs> Thank you so much for investing your time in me. I feel like I've got to produce something. <laughs> right, so that's as it goes like that up to the top of that mountain. Now then coming along the back of it, hang on, what are we going to do with this? This is uh, a forested area. So let's deal with that now whilst we've got the thalo. Is it forested or is it trees? Is it trees or is it rocks? So this is the thing, I can't see, and if you can't see, you know, you can't really um, put too much detail in, can you? I think it's a grey-purple. No, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, okay, let's go with that, it's grey. Dioxazine purple and some of that green blend that we had. And there is definitely a bit of purple left at the bottom, the bottom of it. And it sort of falls away as it goes over here. I'll come back and put some highlights in here. It's very difficult to tell what this is actually. I'm going to leave that dark line at the bottom because we do seem to have that, which is what's making me think it could be forestry. But I can't see, I can't see enough detail to uh, to decide quite what it is. So I'll put some texture in, which is a bit ambiguous, and people can kind of work out for themselves what they what they think it might be. Over into that bit that's okay. Um, so let I think we probably need dark lights rather than highlights. That's what do you get if you mix thalo green with black? You get a very dark green. Yeah, that might be a good colour for us. So I am going to. Dab this around, giving this section texture, m making it so it could be vegetation at a push. I think it looks like it could be. I'm sort of making vague tree shapes here, and they really are vague. But they might read as trees. Not, not to go as far as saying, I'm sure they will. 
That phthalo green with the black through it's fine. Good for this, in fact. Right, okay. Uh, so that brings us up to there, which is fine. I think that definitely reads as uh, a forest. In fact, so much so. I'm just going to go back to this bit that we did yesterday, where I wasn't very keen on the colour. I had such a downer on thalo green yesterday. Yeah, I, th I think that's much better. What do you think, Mr. F? What's that, my sweet? Do you think that this colour is better than the colour we had yesterday? Keep up. <laughs> this is what we had yesterday. Yeah, but I think it looks like vegetation. So I'm using this thalo green and black mixture, which is what we've got here, and I think it looks better. You're the artist. Indeed. You're the one with the license. <gasps> okay. There is just a strip of light across there. Uh, so without cleaning my brush. Everything says, Fiona, don't be concerned. You did a lot of teaching, which beginners need. You gave us a lot of good tips. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, I did feel yesterday like it was... Um, it was a good day for learning yesterday, Yesterday, I thought. But I do like fit to give you um, something to aim for at the end of the day. Right, so that bit there needs just lightening up just a bit. This bit as it comes down here. I think I've finally found my place in the picture now. Please be careful when you're doing it because... It is so easy to lose yourself in this. One hill does actually look pretty much like another. Yeah, excellent. Right. So along the bottom of here, we've put in this um, that mixture of sap green and olive and the liquid stuff, green gold. Uh, which has given us a nice background and I do actually think that we're going to have to break out something like a yellow. Um, Paula popped along and says that she can't pop along today. <laughs> <laughs> she had shared first. Though. Thanks for popping along and not popping long, Paula. That's great. She did share first. Oh, you're a good lass. No, she's um, busy today. Is Paula. I had a chat with her earlier on. She's trying to fathom out various things to do with websites. So literally do not ask me because oh, I just don't know anything about it. I'm painting away here, guys, because it's nothing, um, nothing you can't do this bit here. I'm just putting the side of this hill in as it goes up. It's sort of... Um, goes up in steps, which is what, what we've done here. It's not, not difficult to see, it's not difficult to do, so I know that you can do it. Um, so yeah, we were just about to, well, shall I do that, shall I do that? I'll do. I'll carry on on the background first, because when we come to here, that's the water, then, then things really change. So if I can get this bit here on the back done, we'll be making enormous progress. Right, so from here along to about here, there is there's light hitting this, so I I do need a nice light colour. So I'm going to break open this uh, fluid acrylic again. I really like fluid acrylic, um, especially for things with details. If you can imagine with the heavy body acrylic, um, it doesn't. It doesn't flow so well, so you can't get the smallest details. That commission that I did with the birds on, God, that nearly drove me daft. But um, I did need details. I mean, I seriously needed details. And so the fluid acrylic really, really came into its own. I've got hair somewhere there. So this comes along almost to the peak, but not quite. And this is the sun 
shining on the back of this here. And I think you'll agree, it really sort of sets it off. Looks really nice. And it makes everything in front of it automatically go into, into a shadow. Right, so we're up to here, which is there. So what happens now? It goes dark. Well, there's a lighter sweep up there. So seeing as we've got this on the go, let's just put that in. Oh. Uh, yes, we put that in, didn't we, as a placeholder yesterday, but there is there is a lighter mark down here. And there's a lighter bit up here under the peak of that hill. And it comes around. Comes around like that. Might we'll paint into that, but that's pretty much what that is. And then there's this very handy colour here that we mixed up. I can't remember how we mixed it now, but it is a nice colour. And there's a peak up here, which is our furthest along this way one. And I've done that in a green, that dark green mottly colour. I'll have a look at it in a minute and see if there's any rocks or trees or anything that we need to be concerning ourselves with because um, I need more than one layer anyway, because as you can see, you can just see straight through that. So let's have a good look on here. No, it just looks like it's some sort of... I don't know what that noise was. It was just going to go like meh. You know, it's just something. Um, so we'll wait for that to dry. We'll put another coat on that. Um, I hope this colour doesn't dry because it's a really useful colour. And like I said, I just can't quite remember how I um how I mixed it. <laughs> I'll need to wait, play the video back and see how I mixed it. So this comes up to like what looks like a little ridge here. Uh, where the light, the sun's catching the light, and it goes down into this dark, darker colour, which is very, very, very transparent. Sad to say. And it comes round there. There's a lot of peaks and valleys and troughs and dips and what have you on this. But that's okay. We like a challenge, don't we, folks? So along here... Yeah, no, this needs to be darker. It needs to be a bit darker. So let's take a bit of black, a bit of sap green bit of olive green. Um, let's put a bit of white through that see where we're at. Right, we're pretty olivey, so let's add some more sap to it. I think I need to get a, a brown out. This is another liquid one, but don't, you know, heavy bodied or whatever will be fine. It's just, this is what I can grab really quickly. So I'm going to add a bit of brown to that. It's the first time we've touched on the browns um, because now we're, we're getting slightly closer to us so we can see brown. You can't see browns in those far away um, mountains. They're just, um, just blue really, various shades of blue. Well you can see where we're putting our second coat on that it's now, you know, um, almost opaque. So the, this is the colour for the top. So let's put that top in again. Top of that peak down and paint over some of that light green that we put in as a placeholder. Don't, don't cover it all up. I still want a little bit of it there, but not as thick as we put it in. And then this darker colour does come from there round, round to there. Oh, we've got a hip hip array. So it starts off up here, 
and it's the other side of that green line that we put in so we'll pay respect to that oh, have I have got a line there what's that to do with oh yeah it's the other one coming up so we'll keep following the picture keep following your picture try not to get lost because I'm telling you it's so easy in this one Gonna have to leave that to dry a second. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that um what's it called? Green gold in there. Because there is quite a definite sort of uh line along there. Right, let's have a look and see what's on the peak of this. Well, yeah, like I said, not much. So that's the peak. It comes down to this sort of line here, which is quite bright. There's green or a, gr a greener shade than we've got it up here which comes up to meet that which forms some sort of um, peak type thing might be easier describing this to you actually if I knew what, knew what you called some of these things uh, and it goes all along the top here I'll call this a ridge but it's probably not um, and that the line that we put in is not quite right so just adjust that right so we're a bit stuck until that dries and then that needs a quite a light colour in there so excuse me a sec Oh, Carol, hello. Thank you very much for joining. Really, really nice to see you, of course. So I'm just going to take a bit of this, quite a bit of this white and a bit of that uh, green gold because there's a spark of colour of white brightness up here. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure why it's there, but it's there. I don't really know what it is, but it's obviously something that's catching the sun. So let's go back into this dark. It is actually a little bit darker, so I'll add a little bit more brown. Sorry, Mr. Fix, that you can see something. Just trying to avoid blocking the light with the uh, reference picture. Okay. You, um, blocking what you're painting with the reference picture. All right, I'll try my hardest. I will try my hardest. So they may be a bit on the thick side, so just nip into them as as you paint along. Right, okay, so what else do we need for that? Well, this section's under that light. It's just got the slightest purpley hue to it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of my dioxine purple into that. Oh, look at that colour. I think that's just perfect. Oh, I love that. It's lovely. I mean, I don't want to dress in it or anything, you understand. But for our purposes, oh, I'm doing it again with my reference picture. Sorry, chaps. Yeah, so this has got a little bit of that purpley hue to it which was the overall reason why we chose um, to put a pink gesso background in. Okay, so I'm quite pleased with that, that's okay. So she made it, she's been feeding 19 rabbits. 19, oh yeah, I think she's feeding a, a, a neighbor's rabbits. For You've got to hope that they, you know, Nothing untoward happens to them while Carol's uh, looking after them. That would <laughs> be awful. I don't know why I'm laughing about it, Carol. I'm sorry, because it really would be awful. So I hope they all um, survive in one piece um, and you can just 
hand them back over to your neighbour. Now up here there are, just use this colour when I've got it, there are a section of little hills. I don't think I've drawn them in but they're kind of here. And they come back up off the water like that. So I'm just going to sort of make a note that that's where they are if you like. And it sort of tails down like that and then there's another one here but in between each one there is a bit of um, light green so they sort of stick up but they're going backwards up the hill the receding up the hill there's another little bit there Need some water in my bush. As if you know anybody that you think would enjoy um, painting along with us or watching it or whatever, it would help me enormously if you could share. I know it's not always appropriate and you know you don't have anywhere to share to, but it, if you do, it would be really helpful. Yeah, there's the Rainier garden but there's only two days to go. <sighs> I was looking after a cat one time years ago for somebody. Uh, actually I think he was in hospital or something so I was in, responsible for this cat imaginatively titled Thomas and um, I was told not to let Thomas out because he's the cat that doesn't go out. But I don't know how it happened. One day, anyway, Thomas got out. It happened to be the day that this chap was coming back from hospital. And um, no, it was the day before, that's right. So Thomas was a bit of a finicky eater. But <laughs> he did like fried liver. So we called him and called him, put fried liver in the front porch thinking he would come back. We had some sort of contraption that if he did come back, we could pull a string and we'd trap him in the porch. Was no sign of Thomas. He was much too cute for us. Um, so about midnight that night, there was me, and we lived in a cul-de-sac. So there was me going up and down this blooming cul-de-sac in my jammies and my dressing gown with a frying pan <laughs> with the fried liver in it. I kid you not. Um, no, it's still no sign of him, mind you, I must tell you that. And then when we got up in the morning, there he was. No idea how he got in. So all's well that ends well. His dad never needed to know such a thing had happened. And uh, we never told him. <laughs> so this is getting a goodly bit lighter green over here. Um, as, as we're coming over more to where we can see. And I'm just, I think I'm actually going to have to introduce some yellow. Oh, since it's 34 degrees today. 34. We have got 21.8. And with, and we think we're lucky with that. I might tell you. Um, it's, a, it's been a poor summer, really, hasn't it? It's not been the best. No. I'm adding some yellow to this. Uh, green mixture we have and I'm choosing to do that because the yellow although this says it's opaque this um, studio lasso I bought it because it said it was opaque but I haven't tried it out past history tells me that yellow is never opaque it's one of those colors that just just isn't um, so I'm going to add it to that green mixture that we had in a hope of perhaps garnering some opaqueness from it. We're definitely coming closer now, definitely. Let's add a bit of that to there. That's fine. Uh, where are we here? So here somewhere there's some sort of whirly gig nonsense. I don't quite know what it is. I think there's rocks and a light colour. I'd go so far as saying, so I'll come back and put some rocks in there. I 
I don't know how you can paint Carol, to be honest, in those um, temperatures. Because if you're doing acrylic, surely they must just dry up. I have enough problems here. Air conditioning, maybe? Oh, uh, I didn't think of that. Air conditioning. I guess that's a absolute must-have. Don't you think? That's too hot to live in, sensibly. Right, this is going to need some detail because we're just, um, I don't know what that's doing there. Was it demonstrating something yesterday, I think, maybe? All we're doing is putting flat paint onto a flat canvas um, and it looks very 2D. So we need to get, need to get some interest going. But that's quite a good uh, that's quite a good start to the interest right so where where does our interest lie well there's some light bits in here which haven't been caught by the cloud the sun's actually managed to to shine on these bits so we need really quite a light color so let's just add a bit of um, white to that yellow my brush is um, has still got green on it I'll pick up a bit of that green gold. That, that's a really lovely light colour that hopefully should draw people's eyes. Well, there's no air conditioning, but the house gets in the shade in the evening. No air conditioning. I bet you're boiling. I bet you are. I, just, I think I just have to stand permanently in the shower, really. I can't think of how I could cope otherwise. So this is coming down to the to the water's edge. And as I say, it's nice and bright because the sun's caught it. There's sections of brown in here which we'll have to address at some stage, maybe next. But we definitely want this nice, light, bright bit along the water's edge. And my water, water's edge is there, painted over it, but that's where it goes. So let's get some brown, mix it into a little bit of that. So it's the same family. Um, it's a browny, greeny sludgy sort of colour but it's exactly what we're looking for and there's areas of this here which just adds a bit of texture a bit of interest and gives us a sort of terrain that we're looking for really Sharon sure, says in the southern USA we have to wear air conditioning in the houses cars and every building we go into well yeah I've actually been to Florida um, and I hired a car and the air conditioning went out and I was down at Key West actually and I hired the car from Fort Lauderdale and I just had to ring them and come, come and take this car away and bring me one with AC. I just can't, you can't cope. They did actually, they're very good about it. I must say that road down there, is it A, A1? Is that what it's called? The, um, the, the road that goes straight down to the Keys. That is a beautiful, beautiful road. I, I don't think I've ever been on one that compares. Well, I think that's, that's quite nice. That's where the sun's caught us. We're not too bad. So here we need some rocky stuff. So we'll do what we did before. We'll use some grey. 
tiny bit of purple in with that. That's much too much. Remember what I said to you yesterday about the tinting power of um, dioxazine purple? You don't have lots of muddy conveniences. She knew where to go back in time. Oh, nice. So you get down to minus 10 to minus 20 in the winter. That's a heck of a shift, isn't it? It's a big swing, yeah. It is. Right, so let's see where our rocks are. I'm going to have to pick this up, sorry. Um, they are there. Well, so she loves watching how you bring the colours and textures together. Layers, Carol. It's, it's all to do with layers. There's a good lot of rocks in here. You can see them. Um, there's a very light bit there, but there are some rocks coming around it. And there's a rock there as well. I'm getting just a little bit more fussy about where where I'm putting my rocks um, because they're beginning to make sense to us now. So you can't, you know, you've got to be slightly more with it as to where you place them. I'm not suggesting it, you know, I've got to be absolutely bang on, but something like, uh, which colour am I using here? This one, maybe. Just think there's a few little lines that goes into that that I haven't addressed. Um, there's a bit of this that goes along here, and I'm not sure if it's rocks. I'm not sure what it is, actually. It looks like a bit of forestry that they've fell down. It probably isn't that. I thought it might be. I'll just put that along there. Need some highlights, some lowlights, the usual stuff. And along here, there's kind of like a tiny little tree line. So, get your greens out. Before I do that, I'm just going to put the highlights on those rocks. Highlights and low lights. So I've got a bit of black and just, this is the way the sun's, sun's going that way, so the shadow's the other side. She's good at layering and blending on furniture, but this is another level of art. It's just a different thing. Uh, you know, I, I I used to paint furniture. There just wasn't enough actual art in it for me. I mean, people like Liz Old. Her furniture is amazing because she, she incorporates real art with real furniture. You know, her, her stuff... It, it's fabulous. And I just want to put a little bit of highlight on these where they are catching the sun. I'm putting it on in titanium white with, with a sort of understanding that it's going to fade back a little bit when it dries. I'm sure it will. Um, and I'm really not putting much on at all. Just enough to make me think that that's a kind of rocky place up there. Does that look like a rocky place up there, Mr. Mr. F? Yeah, he says, yeah. He's not in his head anyway. Rocky McRock face. Rocky McRock face, that's what we're after. Right, let's get some greens, get this little row of trees in. We're cooking today. We've still got a quarter of an hour left. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we're going to do. Have a, have a party. We're marvellous. We're all the lagging. Oh, we're lagging, are we? I need to adjust my settings, but I don't do it while we're streaming. Ah, uh, right, okay. I'm going to have to put a darker colour in that, so I'm going to put some brown in. Let's see what happens. And a bit more, perhaps. That phthalo green, my goodness me, it tints everything and anything. 
Becky Louise joined us. Hello, Becky Louise. I used to, I still do, um, follow you on YouTube, subscribe to you. Becky Louise, go to YouTube, look up Betty Louise, uh, Betty, Becky Louise. She does really fun uh, YouTube films. I, I've followed you for a long, long time. And then suddenly Paula contacted me and said, oh, there's a girl called Becky Louise. And I said, hang on, I know her. And I've been following you all the time anyway. So brownie points for me. So we've got a little bit of a tree line here. Now, don't paint things that look like trees. I mean, don't paint things that look like elephants either. But um, the the kind of blobs, they're just different height, different width blobs. No, they're not. <laughs> I thought not. And it's just, it comes along here actually. So yeah, we're going to have to go go back in it again and break up that regularity. Isn't it funny how your brain wants to make everything? It just wants to make a pattern out of everything. So I'm just going to, is there anything left in that? No, probably not. I'm just going to add a little bit more brown and we'll come back and we'll um, break up that regimented row of soldier trees. Are these guys. So I'll put some in right next to the ones that I've got. Some maybe some distance away. They're not even Bob Ross happy trees these. I mean they're just little hints of vegetation. Some are right down by the water. into a bit of a bush. So are you still doing your um, hauls from various places, Becky? They're very interesting, very funny to watch. Oh, that's kind of the last one there, I think. It goes up like that. There is a bit of a, a bit of a something at the bottom of these. I don't think it's just the shadow of the trees. I think there's a sort of line that comes down. Don't make it too too much of a line. Right. <sighs> So time to um, get back to this yellow situation. So we've got some very bright colour there and here. Oh, the sun is really hitting that. And this bit down here as well is very bright. Right, okay, that'll die back a bit, but even so I like it as it is. There is a bright bit here where the top of this, must be this one, where the top of that uh, little whatever it is, is catching the sun. So we'll pop that in as well. Uh, and then we need to do something with these um, brown thingies. Little sticky out bits, um, which probably doesn't need to be a whole lot, but it needs to be some length. Um, what colour is that? Yeah, I think that's probably fine. So let's just give them a bit more. A bit more interest.
little bits like this when you do them and you step back and you think, oh yeah, that, that made a difference. Yeah, that did make a difference. So, now then, where are we? Where are we? Oh, it's a different story. I'll tell you this quickly. I was in Thailand, I hired a jeep. I was heading towards Cambodia for no apparent reason, apart from there was a road and it, there was an English sign that said Cambodia. So I knew it was a long, long way and I'd never get to Cambodia, so it would all be all right in the end. So the sort of road signs, once you got out of any biggish place, weren't in English anymore, which I hadn't actually taken into account. I didn't, I didn't think of that. Um, so all the, t all the signs are in Thai, and Thai isn't a language that you can look at and think it might say something. It's just very, very different. So I had a map that was written in English, road signs that were in Thai. And eventually, after many, many miles, I came across this hotel. So I thought, great, you know, they must have tourists here. There must be someone who can speak English. So I went in and I said to the uh, receptionist, very nice hotel, actually, uh, said to the receptionist, um, hello, I wonder if you could tell me where I am. And sort of blank expression so I offered over the uh, the map completely blank expression that person had never seen a map before and I said where are we pointing to various bits on the map where are we which he then took turned upside down and said where are we where are we <laughs> so I never did get to find out where I was but I obviously made it home so you know that's not so much of a deal. Right, I vowed I wasn't going to get caught up today in this, so. Uh, I need a, a brownie green. I think I had one, and I think it's dried up, given up the ghost. A bit more brown than that. Just for the, the, the peak of this. Just to give it. Uh, it just looks a bit regimented at the minute, so I just want to give it a little bit of texture onto it. That's nice, that bright, uh, sunshiny bit up there is nice. Um, I need some more brown out on my palette. How are we doing? We're doing all right, guys. Doing all right. Stop worrying. I'm just going to come back into this. It's just a bit too transparent for my liking. I do like the brightness popping through. It's lovely, but not too much of it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Right, so we're on to... Uh, actually, I need some ordinary green. By ordinary, I don't mean, you know, not olive, not phthalo. I've got some sap green out here, which we also know is horrendously transparent. So I'll add some titanium white to it, mix it up, and it's far too light, of course, it would be. So I'm putting some um, raw umber in through it. Might still be a bit light, actually. Yeah, that's fine. So it's just on the sort of lee side of these that uh, it's just a bit of grass going up to them. Like that. Yeah, okay. Fine. Fine and dandy. So I think that leaves us with this. Doesn't it? Anything else anybody can see? So this carries along sort of at the water's edge mark and then this which is largely behind the tree hooray hooray we don't need worry too much about it not that I was worried you know I wasn't really genuinely worried about it um, let's mix that this is a bright color that goes down the side of here where it's obviously really catching the sun I might come back actually and reinforce that because it's so bright. And then really what goes on behind there 
is anybody's business. We don't really need to be too too clever with it, to be honest. So I say that we make it just a relatively interesting greenish sort of lumpy bump. We'll get a bit darker as we get towards the bottom. Through the tree, through this reference picture, I can still see there's water here. So I think that, that the bottom, what's the water here, just carries straight along over. So really, we're, let's just see where that is. That's there. So there's no need worrying about anything beyond that. Because I'm going to have to put water on it anyway. If you make a horrendous mistake, guys, like this, which is not horrendous, but a mistake, let's say, um, if you're quick about it, pile loads of water on, dab it off, you'll kind of, um, you'll get most of it off. That's fine. It's just we're going to have to struggle, uh, otherwise getting um, the light-coloured water over it. So we'll just... It's behind the tree, so it's not the it's not the be all and end all. Lumpy bump. Lumpy bump. Lumpy bump. <laughs> I think I probably do have some quite funny sayings. But I don't notice them because I've had them all my life. <laughs> I like the American saying handy dandy. You know, and they've got something that's just right for the job. It's handy dandy. I like that. I think that's probably sufficient. I don't think I need to waste any more of my life or yours on that. I think it's, I think we've done a good job. Right, so just before we leave this, are we happy with it? Well, these are very, very light. They have no business being that light at all. So I need to um, glaze them back. This has got no features in it. It's just featureless, totally featureless. So let's, my paint's all drying up, so I'm gonna have to spray it. You don't want lumpy, bumpy paint, Carol. Um, that's better, gives a bit of life. So let's just, um, is it rocks in there or? No, I think, I think we were right. I think it is foliage, but I think we're going to have to give it a little bit of texture along the way because it just doesn't look right. Like I say, don't get, try and try not to get too caught up in the in the details of all this this is this very light color which i've now got some lighter color mixed up so i'm just going to put that in down there and it sort of folds away to there um and there's a that sort of color underneath it Right. Are there any rocks there? Are there any rocks? No, I think our biggest problem now is these rocks, which just don't look rocky enough. They're just not cutting it. The purple behind them isn't cutting it. They aren't cutting it. Um, not happy. So let's pick up a tiny little bit of diox. Oh, no, that's dried up. Um, bit of grey. Now we've got brown to play with, so let's add that to the equation. That's a bit more dead looking, like it's further away, which is kind of good. I think that's probably more, more what we're looking for, really. Yeah, that's much better, isn't it? 
I like that much, much better. It's not jarring my eye. So I'm pretty much going to obliterate what we had because I didn't like it. And if you don't like it, get rid. Yikes. Who said yikes? Me. You. <laughs> well, it was awful. I didn't like it. It didn't, didn't fit in with my painting. I do like that bit there. That's quite nice. Um, I'm just going to... See if I've got any paint left in my brush after I rinse it out. No, no, no. Because uh, that just needs the tiniest bit of a sort of glaze over it. So I'm just using the paint with a lot of water to form a glaze. And please bear with me, guys, while I just dry that bit and attempt to put some rocks in it. Then I'll let you go for the day. But we've achieved something today. We've got all that, all the back debris done. Looks all right as well, actually. What do you think, Mr. F? There's no point putting your thumb up. People can't see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's dry. So let's have a little go at some rocks. Uh, every time I come to do the rocks, I've got to remake the, the colour because it's dried up. Um, so it's a bit of grey and a bit of white. And because I've got brown and purple, I'm just going to mix that in through them. Because they're quite the way away, these rocks. So there's quite a few up there on that sort of peak. And then not so many as we come down the mountain. And some black for the shadows. If you don't like something, people, if, if you really don't like it, you think you can do better, get rid. Because it'll haunt you, telling you it does. Generally what I do when I finish painting for the day is I put my canvas or you know whatever it is up on the mantelpiece which is directly in front of where I sit in the evening and I view it you know sometimes you just catch it outside of your eye sometimes I sit there and studiously look at it and if something is irking me then it, it's got to go it's really got to go um there's just no point to it if it's driving you mad now it'll always drive you mad so yeah, I like those rocks much better. Just pop a little bit of um, white. Same as before, just go very gently with this. Just highlight them ever such a little bit. You see there, it's the tiniest of white, but it makes such a difference. Okay. Now, that's better, isn't it, people? Or is it just me? Is that not any better? <laughs> I quite like it. I think we need a line of light green just above the rocks there, actually. Everything's dried. Carol now says she can see a little secret house behind the trees. Oh, my goodness, Carol. <laughs> oh, my goodness, me. You've got me near demented, girl. There is a line that goes along there. That much I can see. I know for a fact I have not painted a secret I was in here. But, you know, that's not just to say there's not one. Right, 5.04 here. I am calling it at that. I'm quite pleased with what we've got done today. I think we've made progress. Tomorrow we're going to put the water in. That's exciting, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so we're up to here now. So tomorrow we're going to put the water in. That won't take very long, but there are reflections in it. If you're looking at this and you're doing it and you're ahead of me, have a good look at the water because there's an olive green reflection there 
and there's a purple reflection there. You really need to look at it though to see that. And then there's the greeny sort of bluey colours of the of the mountains reflected there. So just be careful, it's not as straightforward as you might think. But it won't take us long tomorrow, so hopefully we can get that done. Then we can start on this peak here, and then we're into the foreground. It's just all so easy, isn't it? <laughs> See you tomorrow, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye.